Hey guys, Abhishek here and welcome to TechArx. We are starting off with doing game and product reviews, tech reviews and more here on the channel. And today we are taking a look at the Audion Tivo 4 audio interface. Let us know in the comments if you are looking forward to more of such videos in the future. Looking inside the box, good and clean packaging right out of the gate. Uh, on a side note, I've already started using this and tried my best to repackage and do a proper unboxing for you guys. So there was a protective plastic wrap which unfortunately I couldn't replicate. You get a quick start guide in the box, which obviously we don't need, and then comes the interface itself. Starting off with the build, the device is completely made out of plastic but doesn't feel cheap at all. You do find competing interfaces like the Scarlett 2i2 with metal housing. However, kind of a soft quality plastic is used here, feels good to the touch but kind of a fingerprint magnet due to the matte black finish. At the front, there is a headphone jack along with a quarter inch instrument input. But do note, if you plug in anything in the front instrument input, the mic input 1 at the back is automatically disabled. Similarly, if you plug in a pair of headphones at the front, the monitor outputs are auto disabled at the back. Maybe you do want the monitors which are connected to your interface to auto mute once you plug in your headphones. Personally, I don't use monitors and keep my headphones plugged in all the time. At the back, you can see we have two mic inputs here. These are combo jacks and can accept both XLR and quarter inch instrument inputs. Beside that, you have a pair of quarter inch monitor outputs where you can plug in your powered monitors. Finally, we can see that we have a USB-C interface here which you need to connect to your PC or laptop. However, while this is a USB-C, it's not USB 3 and the bus is still USB 2. Nothing to worry about here as most audio interfaces are USB 2 and is sufficient for such external audio interfaces. On the top, we have a large rotary dial flanked by quite a few LEDs which controls your headphone volume, mic 1 and 2 gains, and your computer and mic mix. Instead of what you usually see in other audio interfaces wherein you have separate dials for each of your mics, monitor outs and even headphone volume, this simplifies it down and delivers the same functionality with only one dial. The control of the dial changes every time you select each of the different buttons. So once you press the button marked 1, the dial controls the gain for that mic input. Once you select the headphone button, the dial again controls the headphone volume output. If you want to set your gain, you would have to select the buttons marked 1 or 2 and then control the dial to set the gain amount by referring to the LED markers. If you select both 1 and 2 together, you can set the gain for both of the mics at the same time. The 48 volt phantom power is also very granular and you can turn on phantom power only for mic 1 and not mic 2 or vice versa. Maybe you have a dynamic mic and a condenser mic plugged in. You can select the phantom power for only the condenser mic and not for the dynamic mic and set your gains accordingly for each of them. The big green button you see right on the top is one of the main features for this device. This when pressed calculates your voice levels, real time and sets an appropriate gain for your audio. This is particularly useful for first time users as we tend to mismanage the gain levels and either turn up the gain too much or turn it down too low. This makes it super easy to set up your mic gains properly right at the beginning and takes the guesswork out. However, if you want, you can skip this altogether and set the gain yourself. Getting to the mic preamps, these are of very high quality and have a very low noise flow while giving off negligible harmonic distortions. All this means that you have quite a lot of usable gain for your mic, approximately 41 dBFS as 0 dBU. While you do not need a cloud lifter or fethead in normal use case scenarios, in case if you are using very demanding dynamic mics like the Shure SM7B, adding a fethead or cloud lifter may be a good option in case if you are unable to raise the volume levels in post processing. So we have been talking about the mic inputs all this while, but the headphone output here is also something to be noted. Very low noise and a flat frequency response. However, the headphone output has an impedance of 22 ohms. This would be a problem mainly for headphones having very low impedance. For the best listening experience, your headphones should have at least 8 times the impedance of your audio interface. In this case, you would get the best results when you use a 150 ohms headphone with this interface, like the Sennheiser HD 6XX. However, 
the headphone output quality for anything above 80 ohms are very good and nothing to worry about. You can look at the DT770 80 ohm versions as well. Another great feature of this interface is the audio loopback feature. What it does is it records your mic input along with any audio being played from your computer thus making it very useful again for streaming or podcasts. A similar feature is also present in one of its competitors, the Moto M2. You have been listening to this review recorded with the Behringer XM8500 going into the Audion Evo 4. No post-processing has been done except maybe a 2 dB gain. This comes in at approximately 10,000 rupees but tends to fluctuate a bit in Amazon and keeps coming in and going out of stock. So if you are looking into getting this for yourself, I'll drop a link in the description below. This has been it guys. If you dislike the video, hit that dislike button and let us know in the comments why you disliked it. But if you like the video, smash that like button and consider subscribing to our channel. Thanks for your time and do come back for our next video.